So you have two telescopes, you have two ASI airs, but you have only one mount. And then this mount dies on you. So you can get it repaired and the shop offers you to loan a mount for the time being. I said, thanks, but no. In this video, you'll see the result of me buying a second SEM40, essentially creating the opportunity for having two rigs at the same time in my garden. My name is Martin Schoenmaker and I call myself Koplamp on this channel. If you are here for the first time, welcome. If you are a returning visitor, thanks for your support. Tonight might be the last time that I use this setup with the ASI 294MC Pro because tomorrow I will be going mono. At least if I actually do the purchase that I plan to do tomorrow. Wish me luck! <laughs> So what did I buy? For my William Optics GT81 I bought the 2600mm mono camera from ZWO and I paired it with a 7 position 36mm electronic filter wheel. Um, I still have to test it out because yeah obviously the weather sucks when you buy these kind of equipment. And for the Edge HD I bought the Off-Axis Guider by Celestron, which I paired up with the 290mm Mini by ZWO. I already got that in focus on a rare clear night, well, clear-ish night, uh, on the day of purchase actually. And um, yeah, I still have to uh, fine-tune everything. <sighs> Hopefully it gets clear soon. Installing the off-axis guider and finding focus with the ASI 290mm Mini was trivial as there was a moon out that night. Making the guiding work correctly took some time as I forgot to set my focal length of the guide scope correctly. An off-axis guider of course has the same focal length as the main telescope. The GT81 will need the filters installed so let's do that first. I've bought Optolong filter sets, the L RGB and the 3 nanometer SHO filters. First we need to open up the filter wheel by undoing the little screws around the circumference of the wheel. And then the lid can be easily removed. And now we need to decide the order in which we are going to mount the filters. I decided on L RGB SHO. And of course we don't want any dust modes in the filter wheel, so I always start with the air blower. And then I can start laying out all the needed parts for the build. The filters are individually wrapped in a sort of paper packaged in a small plastic bag that only lets itself open by use of the trusty old scissors. And considering the price of these small pieces of glass, this is a little daunting task. Just to be sure, I clean also each filter with the air blower too, before placing them in the wheel. These are the 36 mm unmounted filters, so you get to place them into the recessed spot inside the wheel and then you need to place a retaining ring over them, which you will then need to screw into place. 
and the screws are very tiny so I decided to use some pinches to, uh, to place them over the screw hole because you do not want to have these screws dropping on that expensive glass. Last filter in the box is the blue filter which goes into the number 4 position. And then I have LRGB mounted. So now on to the SHL filters. And while using the blower on the silver filter I got an unpleasant surprise. There's a distinct difference between the two sides. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. After a quick search on the internet I indeed found that there was a side to be pointed at the camera and the other out to the telescope. Basically the most shiny side which doesn't refract a reflection into multiple reflections is the side to point to the telescope up in the case of this video. So in the case of this green filter it is in the wrong way. The blue filter however is in its correct orientation. See the difference? Nevertheless I decided to leave the filters that I already placed, so the L, R, G and B filters, in their current orientation to see whether or not it has an effect. Then one last time with the air blower to get rid of all possible leftover dust modes. Then it's time to close up the housing again by putting back the lid and the screws that belong in all the holes. But after doing so there are still a few screw holes left open, possibly to attach the camera directly onto the um, filter wheel, but that will lead me to some back focus issues, so I didn't do that. Instead. I uh, used the leftover screws to cover up at least the screw holes that were pointing facing the telescope. Attaching the filter wheel to the telescope I did in such a way that the housing of the motor section of the filter wheel was pointing upwards. I think this will um, yeah, benefit me in balancing the entire setup. I use an Artist Sky rotator to achieve the correct back focus and this will also have another um, benefit so, because I then can um, rotate the camera in such a way that I have the correct orientation. And using the rotator of the telescope itself I can make sure that both the filter wheel and the camera are correctly oriented. And then we're done. Time to test. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like the results that I show and 
there will be more videos coming after this one because there are a lot of challenges coming from having two mounts, two rigs at the same time, as well as uh, doing things with a mono camera, um, using a filter wheel, installing the filters correctly, um, doing some collimation, for instance. Many people ask me, how do I collimate my HD? Um, getting the correct focus for the OAG, the off-axis guider. Those kind of things are just some ideas that I still have laying around. But I do a lot of procrastination, as I call it, because I have so much data now with two rigs in the garden. Data that I am really eager to process to see what my telescopes grabbed from the night sky. Thanks for watching, see you next time and clear skies.